Hello, and welcome to this video on making a sourdough yeast starter. Unlike industrially sourced yeast strains, sourdough yeast is an amalgam of lactic acid bacteria and yeast. This combination of microorganisms is what gives sourdough its name and characteristic flavour. To begin, there are several approaches to starting a sourdough culture, but overall the process is simple. By contrast, it is maintaining the culture that is difficult. This process takes 5 days in this example. Day 0 requires a combination of flour and water and being left to stand for 48 hours. Day 2 is the first time this sourdough culture is fed, requiring equal parts flour, water and starter and left to stand for 24 hours again. From here until about day 5 it will have a strong fermenting odour, very much like potent home brew. This is nothing to worry about in particular. Day 3, the yeast is fed yet again, and day 4 the process is repeated. From here, you should have a culture that is fed every 12 hours, and this involves one part flour, one part water, and two parts existing yeast culture. Normally, this would involve discarding half of the yeast culture, and then feeding to make up the difference. If you're going to use it, then discarding is not necessary, as it will be used and reduce the volume drastically. There are several variations on this general plan of developing the culture, and one that has been used here is the addition of spelt flour and whole grains. These add a degree of wild yeast and can speed up culture growth, and also provide a certain degree of flavour. Use of wholemeal flour to substitute part or all of the normal white flour is a similar effect. This process favours the wild yeast strains. There is still a population of lactic acid bacteria, and these provide a taste characteristic of sourdough. By changing the media, in this case culture, regularly, the lactic acid population is kept low and the yeast is fed a preferred foodstuff. This increases the yeast cell count, while still allowing lactic acid bacteria to proliferate to a certain degree. The final noteworthy point here is that after several days without feeding or long-term storage, a layer of alcohol may be produced. This can be siphoned off and the culture restarted by the addition of new flour and water over several days. The starter can be fed and then held it until it doubles in size, then it is frozen. This will be a low population when first revived, but can be pulled out of the freezer as a stopgap or emergency supply. When not being used for several days to weeks, it can be kept in the fridge as it slows down the metabolism and does not require the yeast to be fed or otherwise maintained. Thank you for watching this video, hopefully it's provided some interesting insight into how yeast is first developed and used in considerably more ancient times and in more artisan breads nowadays. Please post any comments, questions or suggestions you may have below.